Okay. Okay. Good morning. Well, I'll sit. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for your attendance, uh, members of the public, and also for uh, uh, staff. Uh, beautiful weekend. It's good to be back to work, and uh, we've got a fairly short agenda today, and so we would like to uh, begin our meeting, as all meetings, by uh, standing and invite you to, to recite the Pledge of Allegiance with me. Our first item of business is the approval of the minutes from our February 21st meeting and work session. So moved. Oh, go ahead. I'll so moved. I'll second it. I'll make that unanimous. Uh, and Sheriff Allred, represented by Under Sheriff McCormies, has an item of business for us regarding a Forest Service Agreement. Good morning. This is just the uh, annual contract that we have with the U.S. Forest Service that allows us to work with them and uh, help them with um, public safety and law enforcement issues when it comes to do with the U.S. forestry areas within the county. Any questions or, or discussion? No. I, I had one, and, and that is, uh, it appears, it's, is that a $6,000 Annual uh, and it has been renewed annually, with the uh, with the option of, of uh, additional time, as as needed by the Forest Service. Is that correct? Uh, it's always open, and depending on what's needed. This, uh, for example, if certain holidays, we try as much as we can to be present. Um, the U.S. Forestry Service is uh, spread pretty thin, so we tried to help with certain activities uh, during certain holidays in the U.S. forestry area. And if we have a need, um, they're pretty open or we can try to increase the contract the following year. Okay. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, we'll entertain a motion. Uh, Chairman, I'll move that we approve the U.S. Forest Service Agreement uh, to con uh, to continue the agreement process with the USDA Forest Service Coronado National Forest. I will second that. I'll make that unanimous. Thank you, Supervisors Smith and Howard. Uh, that's approved. Thanks for your work. Next, we have our county attorney. Uh, his two items of business. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Basically, we're seeking approval uh, to apply for one grant, and then the second item is, is closely related. Uh, the first grant that we'd like to apply for is the Crime Victim Assistance Grant. Uh, this would be an application from our Victim Witness Department. I'm not sure if the board is aware, but VOCA, who uh, traditionally funds a lot of our, our Victim Services program, they have taken a huge hit nationwide. So we've been told that our VOCA funds that will be coming in this year will be greatly reduced. This is a grant that uh, Elvira uh, Talavera searched out and has found to hopefully help uh, make up for some of that lost revenue. Uh, basically, there is a match requirement, but it's an Asegis grant, which would bring some, some funds in uh, to our victim witness program and hopefully help with uh, what we traditionally use to pay uh, our second victim advocate that we're concerned won't be coming in through VOCA. So we'd like permission to apply for this grant. Thank you. Any discussion? No, it's no. just a, it's an ongoing program that's, uh, that's much needed, so I have no issues with approving this. Uh, Chairman, if there's no other discussion, I'll move that we approve uh, our application for the Crime Victims Assistance Program <coughs> grant. Thank you. And a second? And I'll second that, sorry. Okay, and I'll make that unanimous. That, that item is approved. Great, thank you so much. And your last item? Uh, the next item we have, it's very similar. This is an annual grant. We do it every year. Uh, it's the Drug, Gang, and Violent Crime Control Grant. This is also an Asegis grant. 
Uh, this is typically how we fund our drug prosecutor. Uh, typically, we um, ask permission before applying, but we had a, a deadline that was quickly approaching in February, so I went ahead and applied for the grant. Again, this is done every year, and uh, it's how we pay for Garrett. So uh, hopefully you will understand that I, I decide not to let the opportunity pass before I can get it before the board. Thank you for, for acting quickly. Uh, any discussion? Mm -hmm. Just note that uh, as the as we make a motion to accept or or or, or to uh, not accept, that we need to include ratify in in the motion. Chairman, I move that we ratify the application for the drug gang and violent contr crime control grant. Second. Thank you very much. I'll make that unanimous. Thanks so much, gentlemen. You're very welcome. Next, we have Darlene Montierth. It takes me a little while to get used to the Montierth, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I still sign in wrong sometimes, too. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I'm here to request approval for out of state travel for two members of my staff to travel to um, Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a realware, that's the soft, our assessment software. And several years ago, when a lot of the counties in Arizona first went on this software, even though they have conferences, we asked for just strictly training. And so they started this for Arizona, and they've now, throughout the country, they have this training. And it's at the university, and it's training. IT is there, and the CEOs. It's a really, really beneficial trip. It's a two-day trip. Great. Any discussion? No, uh, thanks for looking out for us. And uh, I'll move that we approve the out-of-state travel for two employees to attend the Harris Govern Training Conference in Fort Collins, Colorado, June 28th through June 30th. And along with that, I noticed on 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 the the uh, our packet that appraisals was in there. That you, they do a lot of uh, uh, studying the appraisals and learning about appraisals, which we certainly. Yes can use all the time and updating. So yeah, I'll second that motion. Good, I'll make the unanimous. It's important to sharpen the saw. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you very, much. very I much, I appreciate it. Next, our health department director, Brian Douglas, with a similar request. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's re uh, request of the board approve an out-of-state travel for Melissa Lunt uh, for the 340B Coalition Winter Conference in San Diego uh, during March 27th through the 29th. And Melissa, Melissa will be re representing the Arizona County Directors of Nursing Association, which is Donna, and she's serving as the current president. And all travel-related expenses will be uh, funded through Donna. Sounds wonderful if the fact that we're Basically, um, she just has basically taken a, a several days, and and someone else is footing her professional association is footing the bill. So, right yeah. there's um, uh, the important thing, or, or, the, or the main reason that she is being sent, is that um, on this 340B um, program that Graham County is is tied in with, it's a federal program that ex that is accessed through the state, and it's for discounted drugs for for public health departments. Um, but she, she's going there uh, to learn how we can extend those, those discounted drug benefits, uh, not only to, the, to our health department, but also with our detention medical unit and see, see what we can do about saving money there. Yeah, uh, it's, I think it's very important, uh, not only for, for selfish reasons, but for employee development to uh, allow them to, you know, to uh, uh, succeed on in in some of their leadership positions just great so any other discussion well, make, make a motion to approve that out-of-state travel for one employee to attend a 340b coalition winter conference in san diego california on march 27 23 29 23. i'll second it i'll make that unanimous and that carries you have another item that's yes. regarding the uh, mental behavioral health program services Yes, and it's also uh, requested to approve hiring Remy Smith and Jenny Bryce as part-time contractors for our mental health program. 
um, that will that's funded through the United Way. We're uh, um, we're uh, once we kind of tapped into this the, this mental health uh, program with our community, it just it's just growing and growing, and we're uh, we're needing some more help. Very good. I've I've attended several of their organizational meetings and been impressed with the quality of the work and and uh, organizational and and and, and uh, looking forward to uh, improvements already improvements but more improvements here in our county. So I'll entertain if there's no other discussion. Entertain a motion. On uh, this. Chairman, I'll move that we approve the agreement with Remy Smith and Jennifer Bryce as part-time contractors for the mental health behavioral health program. I will second. Thank you. I'll make that unanimous. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you, Jen. Thanks for your work. Next we have uh, Hannah Duderstadt. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to request approval to appoint precinct committeemen. We had a list of PCs submitted to us um, by the Democratic Party to fill vacant seats for Precinct 2, 4, 5, 9, and 15. And the following were recommended by the county chairman to fill those vacant seats. They are Harold E. Herbert, Sr., Catherine J. Garrett, Anthony Provincio, Catherine Provincio, Daniel Abney, Ellen Schmidt, Deborah N. Hargis, Shade Hargis, Weston Hargis and Janet R. Vanskoik. And these I present to the board and request your approval to appoint them. Thank you. Any discussion? No. no. All, all good sound people. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Chairman, I'll move that we approve appointing precinct committeemen at, uh, as listed. I will second. I'll make that unanimous. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Director of Planning and Zoning, Steve McGoy. And again, this is a, a matter of ratif to ratify. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Here Good morning. this morning to ratify, that needs to be in your motion, I guess, um, the approval, I guess it's not an approval, it's a, what's the word? This, this goes to the State Liquor Board and it's your, they get to actually approve this, but it's your recommendation that they do so. Um, this is for the the uh, historical society to have a liquor license at the fairgrounds this weekend, and the reason it's a ratification is that it had to be to the state by late last week. So, request. And if you have any questions, I'll attempt. Uh, and, and, I'll entertain a motion. If there's if there's discussion, let's go ahead and proceed with well, that. Chairman, I'll, I'll move that we approve the special event liquor license for the Graham County Historical Society at the fairgrounds March 10th through March 11th. Second. I'll make that unanimous. Uh, put in a plug for the Historical Society. The uh, It's a barbecue uh, competition, but uh, everyone uh, for, uh, I think, $2.50, you can go sample and and we've got people coming in from all over the state. So this will be a, uh, uh, a, a competition, but uh, a fun one. So uh, plan your dinner, uh, make, make your dinner plans accordingly. I'll make that unanimous. I think I already did make it unanimous. So that, that motion carries. And thank you for your work on that, Steve. Thank you. OK, next we have Julie Rodriguez. But uh, she, I think she is still away f for the day so uh, we'll have our county uh, manager take care of this one thank you mr chairman this is uh, a request to approve out-of-state travel uh, for our cfo to attend the gfoa which is a government finance officers association <coughs> annual conference um, usually it's once in a blue moon that she can actually attend this but the stars align with our budget schedule and and audit schedule where she is able to attend this and I encouraged her to do so. A uh, very good conference and it would be from Saturday uh, through Wednesday and we're asking for your uh, approval for this request. Any discussion? I just think uh, Julie does such an outstanding job for us. She's kind of uh, forgotten how hard she works and, and, and uh, 
amount of time she puts in extra for us, so I have no problem with this. So, Chairman, I'll move that we approve the out of state uh, travel for one employee to attend the Government Finance Officers Association annual conference in Portland, Oregon, May 20th through the 24th. And I will second. I'll make the unanimous with the comment that uh, in the agenda packet she indicated that she's going to try to use her own personal. Uh, as department heads, you know how how uh, how, how uh, efficient she is with funds and, and the high standard for using government funds. Well, she's uh, going to try to use her own frequent flyer miles to, to save the county some money. I uh, we we don't expect that <laughs> from everyone, but that's a nice offer. So that that's uh, approved. Our next item is the. Um, uh, uh, the uh, from Dustin and he'll discuss a uh, a grant uh, opportunity not a grant but but actually uh, funding uh, that that we are um, have the opportunity to participate and and to accept uh, for for mitigations for fire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A few weeks ago, we brought to you a, a request to apply for this funding through the Department of forestry and, and they still have funds available um, for any post fire um, remediation and because of the pinnacle fire the cottonwood crossing on klondike continues to wash out klondike road in fact steven and his guys were just out there again a couple weeks ago fixing that <clears throat> road to to make it as, as as good as we could can for now but it needs a a much bigger project and we submitted a project to create a low water crossing with two eight foot culverts underneath the crossing uh, the crossing will be uh, uh, concrete with sidewalls and it should be a pretty substantial project and improvement and we're excited about this uh, we, it was not budgeted early on because we didn't uh, know about it nor about the funds so this is one of those projects where we kind of stop everything what we're doing because it's an incredible opportunity and we, we jumped on it and I appreciate uh, Brian and Colin and, and Steve and Michael and Eric for making time to, to make this happen. They put in a lot of extra hours developing <clears throat> the plans in-house, writing the grant and um, very happy that we were successful with receiving that. So we are asking uh, approval from the board to receive up to $1,017,840 uh, uh, to complete this project. And if if approved, we would immediately start the bidding process. What's not to like about that? So, uh, matching funds? No. Okay. Well, our, no, I, it did not require, but because we developed the plans in-house, that was definitely seen as very favorable. Okay. You know, it's just going to make a lot of people in Klondike happy. I get calls on that all the time, and, and they're excited about it. They're, they're aware of it coming, so I, I, I think it's a great project. It'll certainly uh, make some smiley faces out there. Very good. I'll entertain a motion then. Chairman, I move that we accept the $1,017,840 from Arizona Department of Forestry to construct a low water crossing on Klondike Road at the Cottonwood Wash Crossing. And I will second. I'll make that unanimous. So that motion carries. Thank you all. Um, next is, is our opportunity to discuss a brief summary of events over the last a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll uh, begin. Um, We had a our board of supervisors meeting was delayed a day because of the of the uh, president's day, but uh, there was a, a mental health vision meeting that I attended on the 22nd, and uh, Arizona Department of Housing coordination uh, meeting, very successful. Uh, we had uh, 18 or 19 representatives from the community who met with the uh, Arizona Department of Housing to uh, in initiate a. Uh, a continuum of care or local committee to end homelessness. This uh, turns the key, allows funding to to flow and uh, and uh, planning to begin. And 
Dustin, our county manager, was there and, and appreciated his support. And, and uh, this uh, dovetails nicely with uh, the, uh, the, the, the money that we've already put to, to, for the uh, respite center and, uh, and, and very timely. Um, next, uh, Cindy Orr is swearing in. I was out of town, but I heard that that went well and we're pleased about that. There was a uh, legislative policy committee meeting on the 24th I attended uh, telephonically. And then um, rural transportation advisory council meeting, advocacy council meeting uh, that I chaired. And we're still proposing a uh, bill for rural Arizona to add uh, three projects from Graham County. Uh, there was an addiction night program uh, that was very well done, well attended uh, for people who were working through addiction problems and, and remaining sober, whether it be alcohol or other, other items or, or, or drugs. Uh, then there was a Arizona a New Mexico Coalition meeting. I attended uh, telephonically rather than traveling and uh, Department of Liquor License and Control hearing and then uh, wrapped up the week with the, the uh, Saturday going to the Liberty Salazar vigil. Um, again, we probably about 30 people from the community and they're having another vigil this evening. Uh, uh, parents remain uh, hopeful and uh, they've said very good things about law enforcement. Uh, and that's that's unusual because people are, you know, when, when someone's missing there, there there's, a, there's a high level of frustration, but uh, the uh, sheriff's office, it's, it speaks very highly of what the sheriff's office is doing to, to, uh, to, to try to uh, bring this young lady home from wherever uh, she is. And that's my report. I'll uh, turn the time over to Dustin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll report on some of our projects. <clears throat> Out at the playground, we are we have a pre-construction meeting today, uh, this afternoon with Ron Cox Builders to kick that project off. The copious amounts of paperwork um, have been filed and received, so we're hoping to uh, get that project started immediately for our CDBG. Our Justice of the Peace Court remodel, we have three contractors that are going to provide some quotes on that. They're due on March 16th. Our fairground insulation project was awarded to New Insulation Concepts. They're a, a local contractor, and they have a tentative start date of March 15th, so that's moving along as well. Um, just as an FYI, our Pima JP Corps, we've officially turned that over to the town of Pima, and they're beginning their remodel to make that council chambers and office space for the county manager and clerks and staff. So that was a, a smooth process. I appreciate uh, Judge Palmer and especially Matt Hart, who's not here, but they did a ton of work to turn that over. So we're grateful for that. A reminder to department heads and elected officials that your employee evaluations are due on March 8th uh, to Human Resources. So please continue working on those and get those in. And lastly, um, Cindy Norris Blake and I attended our annual Health Trust meeting from Thursday or from Wednesday through Friday. Um, had a very good meeting. We had all of our vendors there: Maribyrn, Navitas, Emeritus, Livongo, Oaks, Vitality, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and had a lot of really good conversations. Uh, you can imagine with inflation across the country what that does to the medical field so we we definitely will be seeing an increase in our in our premiums this year um, though our our goal as we work through that was to not decrease our benefits available to our employees and we were successful in that though we will see a, a an increase on those premiums as we expected when we have eight percent plus you know inflation across the board so we will be working on that and building that into our budget, but it was a very good meeting. I'm very grateful for that trust that we're in with five other counties and we all have the same interests at heart and a very good meeting. And to dovetail into that, just a reminder that our health assessments are this week on Wednesday and Thursday. So I 
I don't know if there's any appointments available yet if you haven't signed up, but please don't forget about your appointments. That's my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Smith. I'll pass. Okay, Thanks. Vice Chairman. Uh, I'll, I just had a few things, my regular meetings, my board meetings, and uh, attended a couple city council meetings, Safford and Thatcher, so I just wanna say how happy I am to welcome Cindy Orr here as our, our new county treasurer. And, She's going to do a fantastic job, so really excited for you. That, that'd be the end of my book. Thank you. The next item is in order for us to actually issue the checks. They have to be approved by the board, so looking for approval uh, of, for, for the demands and handwritten warrants. A motion. So moved. Second. I'll make that unanimous. Uh, we have an opportunity. We have two members of the public who are here. Three. And uh, anyone on the line? Okay, so this is an opportunity, uh, e even if you have not signed in, uh, you're welcome to uh, sign in after you've uh, addressed the, the board if you want to, or the public, if you want to go on record, and uh, you, you have three, three to five minutes if anyone would like to address the board. Seeing none, we'll move on to opening a fairgrounds. We have a single bid for a um, painting at the fairgrounds. Uh, those buildings, I don't know how long it's been since those buildings have been painted, but uh, this will uh, improve the appearance. Uh, it'll add to the service life of the uh, building exteriors and uh, just just uh, overall give a, make, make the county look just a little bit better as, as we host events there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and this is a, a very extensive project. We've spent lots of hours on it, uh, Trey and Jim as well. We've been doing a lot of work. This includes painting almost everything out there, from gazebos to light poles, which I have no idea how many light poles we actually had out there until you <laughs> get boots on the ground and start counting. It includes backstops, dugouts, um, guardrails i don't know how many hundreds of guardrails we have out there it includes our ag buildings our bathrooms our fairgrounds and and on and on so this is a, a very extensive project and our our parks crew has done the best they can with with the employees they have keeping up with this over the last 60 years but it's definitely in in dire need of a of a facelift on paint so with that, we do have uh, one bid. I think we we, end, we met with two different contractors out there. A third was interested but never scheduled an appointment. Um, but looks like we only got one back, which probably speaks to the extensiveness of the project. But the total bid, this is from Circle C Painting, and their total cost is one hundred and eighty-nine thousand six hundred and eleven dollars. What was was there an estimate that was prepared by our? Our in-house. We didn't have a professional estimate done, but our budget was one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, so we are above that. So we'll have to see what we want to either scale back or or adjust. So very good. I'll, I'll um, any discussion. No, Chairman. I'll uh, move that we uh, check the bid for conformity and and. Uh, direct staff to go forward uh, if this is the best case scenario that we can find. Uh, otherwise, come back to us with uh, other ideas. Very good. I will second that. I'll make that unanimous. And, and it is, it's uh, just a comment, it's great to have a, a, a local, local bidders uh, with local uh, people who live here doing the work. And so I'm uh, pleased to, to see that we've got uh, we were dealing dealing with the, 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 the funds will will stay here okay well that is the end of our um, our agenda and so we do have a number of work sessions scheduled one right after the other today so we'll, we will be uh, uh, adjourning the meeting and moving over to our work sessions thank you very much for your attendance today and uh, wish you well and, and uh, have a productive week